Well, hello, calculus students. In this video, we're going to follow up on our early discussion of parametric equations and see how some of the applications of calculus uh, manifest themselves in the parametric setting. In this video, in particular, we'll look at slopes to parametric curves and equations of tangent lines. So back in Calc 1, we learned that if a curve is uh, described by a differentiable Cartesian equation like y equals f of x, then we can find the line tangent to the graph at the point a f of a, and we can compute its slope by taking the derivative. df dx at x equals a, or f prime of a, turns out to be the slope of the tangent line. We see that in a picture here down below, the uh, curve y equals f of x in blue, and the tangent line in orange. Of course, once you have that tangent line slope and you know the point of tangency, it is expected that you'll be able to find the equation for that tangent line. We can also calculate the slope of a tangent if the curve is described by parametric equations. We're going to use a method very similar to that seen in Calculus 1. We're going to consider at the onset two points on the curve, a point P equals x of t0, y of t0, and another point Q with coordinates x of t, y of t. Remember that x of t and y of t are the equations of the x and y coordinates respectively for our uh, curve. Now we're going to look for the tangent at the point P, and we will let the point Q vary and take a limit that brings us to an expression for the slope of the tangent. So in the picture we see here, we see the point P here. Again, that's going to be fixed. And our first step in finding a tangent in Calc 1 was to take a second point Q and then draw the line through P and Q as you see here. This is the so-called secant line determined by P and Q. The secant line has slope that's computed as follows. We start with the difference in the Y coordinates. So the Y coordinate of Q is Y of T and of P is Y of T zero. And then divide by the change in the X coordinates. We then take the limit as t approaches t0, and we assume x of t and y of t are continuous functions. So when t approaches t0, x of t approaches x of t0, y of t approaches y of t0, that is the point q uh, moves towards the point p. When we take that limit, the secant line becomes the line tangent to the graph at p, and we can compute the slope of the tangent by just taking a limit. So the slope of the tangent is the following. Here we have the slope of the secant line computed earlier. We take its limit as t goes to t0. And now because these are functions of t, we make the following algebraic step. We divide the top and the bottom by t minus t0. This is equivalent to multiplying by 1. You can check that a little algebra reduces this expression here to the one we started with back here. The reason for doing that is that the difference quotient y of t minus y of t0 over t minus z0 uh, is one we've seen before in the definition of derivative. So if we assume these two derivatives exist, that is the limit of the numerator and denominator exist, we can bring the limit into the numerator and denominator, and we see there the definition of the derivative of y at t0 and the derivative of x at t0 in the denominator. So here we applied that definition of derivative to evaluate the limit. And as we mentioned, uh, the numerator becomes, in the limit, the derivative of y with respect to t at t0, the denominator, the limit of the derivative of x with respect to t at t0, or y prime at t0 over x prime at t0. So we're going to keep in mind this relationship that uh, if we have a Cartesian described curve, the derivative of Y, the y coordinate with respect to the x, or the slope of the tangent of the curve, is given by doing y prime of t over x prime of t. So we can get the slope from the derivatives of the individual uh, parametric functions. Let's take a look at an example. We're going to let c be the graph of the parametric equations given by x equals e to the t cosine t and y equals e to the t sine t. We'll restrict t to the interval minus pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. Our goal is to find the line's tangent to c in parallel to the line with equation y minus x plus 5 equals 0. In the picture below here, we've shown the graph of c and the line. 
Now the line has slope one, although the distorted scales on the x and y axis kind of distort the appearance of the slope. But this line labeled y minus x plus five equals zero is meant to be of slope one. Before we solve this problem, let's take a closer look at the graph of C and understand why it looks the way it does. The parenting equations for C uh, describe points with these coordinates, x of t, y of t, are given in this form, e to the t cos t, e to the t sin t. We'll often write an expression like this as e to the t in front of the ordered pair cos t sin t. This notation means that we can multiply the e to the t inside the coordinates multiplying both the x and y coordinates by e to the t. And just remind ourselves, t is between minus pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. In a previous video, our introduction to parametric equations, we saw that the equations x equals a cos and t, y equals a sine t, or we can write that as a cos and t comma sine t. These equations describe a circle of radius a centered at the origin. Now remember that, uh, as we discussed, the point P with coordinates cos and t sine t is on the unit circle and moves around the circle as t changes. The factor A, or if you like, e to the t in front, is a multiplier that moves the point closer or further from the origin O along the ray OP. And then because e to the t increases as t increases, the distance from O increases, and that is why the curve C has the spiral look that we saw before. So here is a figure below of part of the curve C and the unit circle. And uh, so we have here on the unit circle point with coordinates cos and t comma sine t, and the ray from O through that point gets the curve C out there at distance e to the t from the origin. For our knowledge of the unit circle, keep in mind that this ray through the point cos and t comma sine t, right here, this ray must make angle t, as we see right here, with the uh, x-axis. And so as t increases, the cos and t sine t moves around the circle in the counterclockwise direction. With the e to the t multiplier in front, we still get that motion around the circle, but the radius e to the t increases and sends us on that spiral trajectory. So let's now return to our example. We seek tangents of slope 1, so we need to find all the points at which the derivative dy dx equals 1. So we're going to use our calculation for the derivative by expressing it in terms of the derivatives of the parametric equations. We need 1 to equal dy dx. That's the slope of the tangent. And we saw earlier dy dx is dy dt divided by dx dt. In the problem statement, the y coordinate was given by e to the t sine t and the x coordinate by e to the t cos t. In the next line, we use the product rule to compute those two derivatives, getting e to the t sine t plus e to the t cos t in the numerator, and e to the t cos t minus e to the t sine t in the denominator. For this fraction to equal 1, the numerator and denominator have to be the same, so we can equate the numerator to the denominator to get this expression, and that's pretty simple to solve. We can bring the e to the t sine t terms to the left and the e to the t cos t terms to the right and find that the requirement is that 2 e to the t sine t equals 0. For values of t in the interval minus power 2 to 3 power over 2, which is our restriction on the t values, uh, the sine of t is 0 when t equals 0 and t equals pi. And now that we know the t values for these uh, places where the derivative is 1, we can go back to the parametric equations and figure out what the x, y coordinates of these points are. So up here we've just restated the problem to remind us what we're doing. We're now going to analyze the two t values we found. When t is 0, the x coordinate is x of 0, which is e to the 0 cos and 0, turns out to be 1. And the y coordinate is y of 0, e to the 0 sine 0 is 0. So the line of slope 1, these lines must have slope 1, through the point 1, 0 has equation y equals x minus 1, 
and this is one of the lines tangent to the curve C at the point 1, 0. And the second t value was t equals pi. And again, with the same analysis, we find x at pi turns out to be minus e to the pi, and y at pi turns out to be 0. The other tangent line of slope 1 passes through the point e to the minus pi 0 on c, and that has equation y equals x plus z to the pi. Here is the equation for the line tangent to the curve c at the point minus e to the pi comma 0. To finish off, let's look at the graphs. The figure below shows the curve c and the graphs of the two tangents, and fortunately those two lines do look tangent to the graph. So this video pretty much focused on one theme, so we're only going to mention one thing to remember from this video, but that is the important way to come up with slopes of tangents or the change of y with respect to x when you're working with parametric equations. So suppose we have parent equations x of t, y of t, so restricted to a, t from a to b. And if x of t and y of t are differentiable at a point or at a value c between a and b, as we say here, then the slope of the tangent to c at the point x of c, y of c is given by y prime of c over x prime of c, or dy dt divided by dx dt at t equals c. And of course, that's provided this denominator is not 0. Probably wouldn't have been a bad idea to put that in, so we'll do that now. And if the denominator is, is 0, then you may have to do a little more analysis to see if you might have a vertical tangent there or something else is going on. And of course, as always, the derivative dy dx we have here is also the rate of change of y with respect to x as the point xy moves along the curve at, and at the point x of c comma y of c. So we'll be back in the next video to talk about parametric equations and arc length and other applications of integral calculus.